boat design is a winner. I'm very impressed with it right now. I think, I think of this boat as being wholesome. She's very handsome. Oh boy, look at that. It really is tidy. Look at that, I have never seen that. This is winning prizes right now. What do you think about that? Hi there, this is Captain Ku and my old sailing buddy Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey, Captain, this is like a moth to the flame with you in the flag blue hulls. <laughs> there seems to be everywhere. You know, we're in Hingham Mass today. Yeah. Uh, and you know what we got up there? Blue sky. Blue sky and sunshine, man. Now today, I was just looking at this beautiful hall. This is on a saber, and we're going to take a look at one of these babies up in uh, Maine in a couple of weeks. So we're looking forward to that. We haven't done a saber yet. These surprises always seem to exhaust me. We've had a few questions. People have asked us, when are you guys going to go sailing? And a few people have asked, could we go sailing with you? They did. And so, I have some good news. What is the good news? We are going to go sailing, and we're inviting people to come with us. Oh, you guys are really lucky. On a beautiful 12-meter uh, former America's Cup boat. Uh, she was assigned for the 1958 uh, America's Cup trials. She didn't quite make it. And she looked good doing it. And she looked as good as anything. Yeah. Her name was Heritage. Heritage in Newport, Rhode Island. In Newport, Rhode Island. Who designed it? Charlie Morgan. Ah, that's it. 1958. What a great year. So, we have some dates lined up. June 19th, 20th, and 21st in the afternoon. Right. We're going to do some sailing trips and invite people to come along with us. Terrific. In the evening, I have one more surprise for you. Really? Once the wind calms down and the sun starts to set, we're going to do a little harbor cruise with a jazz trio, a little bit of snacks, and maybe some Frisionette on Gansett, a beautiful wooden harbor cruise boat uh, where we'll have a little chit chat with people that want to come and hang out. That sounds like terrific fun. How are we going to invite friends? Well, we're going to make tickets available. So there'll be tickets for the sailing part of the days, and then we'll have tickets available for the Gansett Harbor evening cruise. Oh, wow. so they could be not necessarily the same people going on all the things. Right, right. So much to do in Newport. It's so, one of the greatest seaports in all of America, for sure. If you've never been to Newport, to Rhode Island, this is a trip yeah. worth making. Come, come sailing on an America's Cup boat. Enjoy the weather, enjoy the scenery. Join us in the evening for a little yep, jazz, exactly, jazz exactly, harbor exactly, cruise. Yep, yep. We're excited about sailing. We're excited about meeting some of our fans and our friends, uh, the folks that have been supporting us this whole time. So, It's going to be an exciting time. What a great yeah, idea. This yeah. was well thought out, buddy. Well uh, thought I have out. to hand it to the Heritage folks, too. Oh, oh well, um, they've been really nice to us. They've helped us shoot some of the early scenes you see in our episodes. That's right. Those glorious shots of, of uh, uh, Heritage sailing under the Jamestown Bridge in Narragansett Bay are pretty striking. And that took some time and effort on their part to do that for us. Yeah. We love them, they're great yeah. folks. Yep. Many of you will get a chance to meet them and to have an experience you might remember for a little while. Yeah, it'll stick with you. So, Randy? Yeah. What are we gonna do now? Oh, I'm gonna go to Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Randy. New I'll see you in Newport. You know, Instagram is not a place. <laughs> Today, we're going back to an old standby from the old days, oh, really? the O'Day Company. Ah. It was started by uh, George D. O'Day, who was originally uh, an Olympic sailor, and he sailed on the America's Cup boats, and started out as an importer of uh, European boats, small sailboats. Uh, one of which, I think it was called a, I forgot what the original name was, but he brought it into this country and it turned out to be the Rhodes 19. Ah. and introduced that, and they built a whole lot of those. And your That's captain, a favorite of yours, isn't it? Your captain, I'm about to say, yeah. your captain spent a whole summer in Newport, Rhode Island, behind the helm of a Rhodes 19. And the O'Day Day Sailor, uh, which is a 16-foot kind of smaller version of the 19, was incredibly popular. And I think they built something like 12,000 of those. And he actually got an award for that, and I think they have it in a museum somewhere as, a, as an example of early, early, uh, 
boat design and, and boat builds. And so today we have a 1983 O'Day 34. And the whole 34 line was a four-year run from 1980 to 1984. And today we're looking at a 1983. So near the end of the line. And she really looks, uh, she looks like she's in tip-top shape. She has some help standing on the cradle, doesn't she? Oh yeah, a yep. little, little short. Yep, a little short, but she only a four foot three inch draft. What do you think about that? That's great for uh, gunk holing. Oh, gunk hole, the Chesapeake Bay, uh, any place there's not very much water. And it's an interesting design. This was done by John Decknatel. John Decknatel worked for Raymond Hunt Associates. And uh, as we've seen, we've had a number of people pass through uh, the uh, hunt office. This is a nice fin. I like this. I don't know how to explain it other than that it's just a nice looking shape. I like the uh, the sweep into it. It's got enough length and even though it's short the normal would be another foot down. She's a little again a little thin up here not as deep as some. She flattens out a little bit and she's got good flat bilges in here. They've just put a fresh coat of bottom paint on this and this is for the cruiser uh, who doesn't care about the extra half knot or so that he would lose by having all these little uh, foxholes, you know, fared over. Would you blast it if it was yours? Well, you know, you ask me that question a lot, and my problem is I still have this racing mentality and wanting to get the most out of a boat. Ideally, I would love to soda blast it. It's all budgetary, isn't it? How much do you want to do? How much do you want to spend on it? It's a very straightforward, a good-looking boat. It's a very good-looking profile. One thing we should know, too, that they have a cast-iron keel on this boat. Does um, the cast-iron present any issues as far as rust or corrosion compared to lead? The only difference with iron is that the iron is not as dense as lead, so uh, you need a little bit more of it, and it should be a little bit deeper to get you the same amount of ballast that you would get with a lead keel down the same distance. But I think pretty certain that they did a good job with this, uh, getting them to balance out properly, because in 1989, a sister ship to this boat called Yukon Jack won the Marion Bermuda race. Oh, wow. You know about the Marion Bermuda race? I do, yeah. That's a race for just amateurs, as opposed to the Newport Bermuda race, which allows you to bring your sailmaker and your designer and a few other people on board. So this boat design is a winner. Uh, in, at her heart. We have a nice little ridge coming back here from the keel to fare into the rudder back here uh, to help prevent any stalling up high. Uh, and this is a pretty big barn door for it, isn't it? I think you're going to be very comfortable with this boat. This boat is not radical in any way. There's nothing, nothing radical about the design, the body, and so forth. It's just straightforward. Uh, I sort of think of it as kind of an all-American boat. And by the way, just look right through here past at the next boat. There's a modern spade rudder. And quite a difference between that and this boat, isn't it? Yep. Now that's a hard racing boat. She goes very deep. This is a little, little lower, a smaller boat, of course. We have an exposed shaft and strut here. And again, for the cruiser, he's got a nice, ooh, nice easy turning uh, propeller. And again, we'd want to set that up in line with the, with the keel. <laughs> These are cheap. Why not replace them before you go in, right? Yeah. We got a lot of through holes coming out of the transom. Uh, there could be cockpit drains. We've got the engine exhaust here probably. And uh, there's probably a uh, vent here for the propane. Because here's one little through hole. That actually might be, just by the size of it, that might be the propane exhaust right there. And it's plastic. And that's fine. Uh, but she's very clean. Has a nice run to her. If somebody took the time and they longboarded the bottom, if they put a, my favorite, ball to plate finish on the bottom, super slick, put a, a flexible propeller on, get a new set of sails, and then spend some time learning how to make the boat go. They could have a lot of fun racing this boat, PHRF. I'm very impressed with it right now. What do you say we take a look upside? Stairway to heaven? Let's go to the stairway to heaven. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people, and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing, so every little bit helps. Thanks again. Hey. Oh, okay, Randy. This is so unusual. Come you on the wheel. Come on aboard. A very comfortable looking cockpit. She's all molded, everything nice and round, curves everywhere. You're not going to hurt yourself on this boat. They've left enough room th between the wheels so that the helmsman can get up and move around that. It's a good size Edson wheel. This is a nice binnacle setup. Uh, we've got 
a, a nice clean no bubble Ritchie compass. We have a nice C80 uh, Raymarine which uh, does some map uh, map charting for you and it also has integrated radar I believe on there too. I've got terrific visibility forward and uh, we've got two big seat lockers here and we don't have the key available. I was going to show you what right behind me is just a, a basic I don't know, whatever you want locker, but it also has access to your self-steering gear. You see the ram down there? And so you can get to check that and see if anything's fouling it up or anything, make certain it's working. Possibly get to your steering quadrant as well. On the other side, we have our propane tank. Oh, nice. And we found the drain for that right over the side, didn't we? Yep. Could you, is that a gasket? Yeah, it, no, it's... No, no gasket. Oh, wait a minute. Kind of a gasket? No, it just looks like a gasket. Just a hard, hard plastic. Yeah, hard plastic. So, again, we'd like to see a gasket in that, wouldn't we? Yep. We have your bilge pump down here, so you'll be happy the captain can keep pumping as the ship slides past the next iceberg. Uh, this has got a really nice bimini on this particular boat. You'll notice up here the zippers along the front of it, which tell me that you're going to be able to connect that to the Dodger in front. Behind us, we just have a static backstay, meaning that uh, there's no adjustment to it. You'll set it up for just all around sailing. Just set that turnbuckle where you want it. As opposed to like a hydraulic? Exactly, yeah. or a mechanical device. There's a full, full down uh, ladder here, and of course they've got the horseshoe life ring uh, and a GPS antenna. So there's a little less wood than we're normally used to. Well, O'Day was building this for a price, and the minute you start putting wood into these boats, that takes an extra craftsman to do that sort of thing, and extra time. Now, if you look along the tow rail here, uh, you'll see that they have a little nod to teak. There's a little teak cap on there, which is kind of nice. It just dresses it up a little bit, doesn't it? And while we're down here, look at the uh, Genoa track. She's, she's in at the, uh, what do we say, seven degree yep. uh, mark line. And it's got a nice sliding car on there. I think that's all Schaefer gear, probably. A variant 26 right here. It's not self-tailing. Let's uh, take a look forward. I'll go up on the fourth side. So we're seeing a pretty, pretty plain Jane sort of deck layout, don't we? There's no center hatch. Uh, I can see three opening ports on this side, now you've got three on the other side for cross ventilation. There's a giant hatch at the forward end of this coach roof that will give you a ton of flow through air for the boat. There are two nice sized translucent port windows area here on either side of the boat. She has mid-boom sheeting here, you see the six part tackle right here that comes up and leads down and goes back to a winch under the Dodger. A very basic uh, non-skid and it's nice in the two tones, the light, this is sort of a pale gray would you say? Yeah. This is an isomat spar, uh, and they're made in France. And this may also have bat cars on it. It does have bat cars on the sail, which are roller bearing cars that go up uh, where the sail attaches to the mast, and the, and the sail will just fly up and down with no problem. You can see the uh, reef point lines coming here in the outhaul. There's probably three reef points and one outhaul line exiting the forward end of the boom. And these little eyes on either side are to catch the tack of the sail when you bring it down for reefing. There's no windlass up here. We have a anchor roller on the very bow. No place for you to stand. Mm, that makes me sad. And a nice aluminum casting for that whole thing. It also has a single line furling system, right? We've seen that before? Oh yeah. Where you just pull in on one side and it rotates the drum. It does not collect the line at the mast. This is a period piece right here. The two half grooves in this head stay, this head foil, where you could set up one jib, go racing, and then you want to change the sail. Then you set the other one up in the other groove, hoist that, and then you drop the first sail down behind the second sail you put up. This is unusual. It looks like that may be part of a Cunningham system up here as well. But I'm standing on an anchor locker. What do we have? An anchor. Looks like an anchor. That's our old friend Dan, isn't it? Yep. Dan Forth. Dan Forth. And uh, you just pick that puppy up. Well, you have your kids pick that up. Or grandkids. And throw it over the side. We've got a really nice looking bow pulpit. The fabrication is just dandy. Double lifelines. Again, we have the old period plastic coated lifelines. Does this qualify as a uh, bulwark or is it just a tow rail? I don't think I'd call that a bulwark. I think <laughs> we'd call that a tow rail. The uh, teak on here needs a little touch up. Again, all pretty easy stuff. But she was a price built boat. 
with a great design to her. A very wholesome design. I think, I think of this boat as being wholesome. What do you say? Downstairs. Let's do it. All right, Rande. Hey. Come on down. Hey, you made it down here quickly. I did get down here quickly, and I am in awe once again by uh, the Yacht Design House of Raymond Hunt and John Decknatel and the O'Day Company. O'Day, he was not himself per se a designer, um, but he would get people like Ray Hunt to do the designs for a lot of their boats. And Ray Hunt is one of the few designers, actually, uh, in history almost, that had equal success designing uh, power boats and sailboats. His famous Mopey, I think it was Mopey or Moppy, uh, powerboat, uh, won some offshore race in early years, and he's responsible for the deep V design of these offshore powerboats, and he was an avid racer sailor himself, so Deck Natal apparently drew most of the lines for this boat, and the room and the volume in here, and still have a pretty looking boat. She's very handsome on the outside. Now, we've got a lot of plastic, okay? We've got a lot of plastic inside, but there's some nice touches of teak, oil teak here. This bulkhead is very rich on both sides, and they've taken the time to put on some uh, uh, to alternate teak and fiberglass on the uh, ceilings right here. You won't have to worry yourself cleaning this boat up after a day. A quick wipe down will take care of everything. Uh, overhead there's a, a funny thing you might have noticed. It's a, a, a bit of an access to some wiring and other things up there. Can you feel how that, that is? Is that a... See, it's just a fabric material, yeah, right? it feels like it's stretched. And it'll be stretched out, right. That would be fixed. Uh, here's our opening ports. And they're not the stainless steel type, they're plastic. Again, there's a price point. There's a nice little kerosene lamp, right, on gimbals. So when the boat's healing over, you'll have light in here when the power's gone out. Except for it has the, the flame uh, soot thing. It does have a smoke arrestor up there, and unfortunately, that's not going to tilt with it, is it? Nope. you got to mount the whole thing on one board, and then the whole board tilts. That's, that's what we do it. Look at the size of this table. Pretty nice here. Good-sized fiddles. I'm going to set this down here. Uh, two simple fiddles. I think I can get it past my knees, we'll find out. I don't think so. Oh, past one knee. I'll get the other knee up and out. Oh, there we, there we go. Ah, but they've got a little storage area here, and, they've, and they put this on hinges. We don't see that. Usually it's just a pull-up piece. And there are all your emergency flares, and they're all numbered, so they've got some sort of system on the boat for that. And over here, since you're sitting at a dining table, you could probably prepare your next meal out of this very area here, couldn't you? Now, moving aft, Let's come into the galley here. We have a cutting board sitting on top of the of the uh, stove here, and two burners, and there's an oven, of course. So, and that may have been cooked in once. Or twice, yeah. Two deep sinks. Here's your center line of the boat, pretty close to the center line. And I'm going to take a quick peek at something down here. The sink has two drains to it. One goes one way, one goes the other. And, uh, as we've noticed in other older boats, if you're on a certain tack, sometimes the water can push up through that. But I think this has been baffled, so that won't happen. Random storage. Always storage on these boats. And all your cooking tools. It's a very complete galley. It has a nice uh, molded floor down here. And that's got a little non-skid to it, so if you spill some grease, you won't slip too fast. And in this locker, we have... A nice big deep refrigerator, right? But on this side, oops, uh, this area has a drain in it. And this tells me that this would be an area you could put ice into for short-term day sales or for even long-term. But it's also, I think, pretty well insulated. Uh, this top is pretty thick, not as thick as it could be. So you could do pot and pans or uh, additional food storage. Is there a little trash bin in there? <coughs> there we go. Uh, not really, no. It's, no. Not, it's not the fold-down type. Now, let's over to the nav side. You've got a nice... Uh, well, this would normally be a hanging locker for foul weather gear uh, for you. But they've got a radar unit backing into that. We've seen big quarter bursts, haven't we? Yeah. Have we seen one this size? Uh, we did see a giant one on uh, Lafitte 44. Oh, that's right, yeah. Like you can see I can actually pull my feet in here and rotate my body and lie down. Um, a little tray up here for night water and some books or whatever you want to read while you're down here. And you can also follow your 
your course on the GPS behind me. Yep, that's an old Loran C right there. There is an updated uh, uh, VHF here. It has a distress button. Yeah, that does not have AIS in it. And you got a library place here. You always need that for your manuals. Now, that's a pretty tidy... We're going to give him an extra point for that, I think, at the end of the day. What do you think? Yeah. And I've got my radar right here. I've got a, a repeater on the Raytheon. And I've got a little compass here just to keep me kind of honest. So this has got everything you need. It's a, it's a nice little arrangement. You know what i got right here? What's oh, up? boy, look at that. Somebody took some time. Looks nice and tidy, easy to get to. I'm glad you decided to open the, uh, the front of this thing because uh, this is really pretty good um, access, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's practically sitting in my lap right now. Uh, you can check the, the belt, so this belt is a little soft, you want to trim that up a little bit. And these, why don't I always make certain that your shivs are operating in the same plane? If you don't, you're going to get a lot of black gunk, and that's right there what you're going to get. And you want to check the belt too. If you start seeing the belt sinking down like this, getting below the top of this ridge, that means it's, it's burying itself and it's eating itself up. Is it easy to uh, plumb those and bring them into Oh, yeah, school? yeah. Uh, for the most part, there'll be some sort of adjustment on one of these brackets down here. Uh, and there's a couple of different brackets here for adjusting your alternator. And that is the documentation number, by the way, of the boat. And look at the uh, engine bed. This is interesting, a molded job that they did. Uh, what are you spotting back there? Uh, I think a Raycor fuel filter way back. I think you do, and because there's not one way front, and also there's going to be access to one of those two sail lockers in this cockpit. Kind of modern hand grabs, aren't they? I don't even want to sit on that cushion. Oh, wow. Nice and firm, and you know what? This goes way back. That goes another foot behind this cushion. So I know that this backrest will flip up, and you'll have this whole berth, and it's almost, I won't call it a double. It's close to a double here. Uh, and then you've got a slide out on the port side that will come out and open that up for you as well. Can... Here's our Isomat Spark coming down. She's keel stepped. Let's take just a peek at that if we can get this up. Yep. Oh, look at how nice that comes up. Look at the step for the spar down there. There's no rust. Look at the look at the sump down there, and the, and the uh, you can see the keel bolts are fresh. But you can see how they've molded the floor pan into this boat for structural strength. And I like the grab rails right here. Especially when you get older, you like grab rails. Now we're up in the forward uh, hallway here, and I'm going by a, I don't know if you can, I'll get step out of your way a little bit, but look at that big hanging locker right there. This forward door for the forward cabin closed off, you've got total privacy up there, right? Now, you have to see how this whole thing works. It's, it's very tricky, but you can open, lock that open, and I'm coming into the forward cabin, and look at the size of the foot pan down here already. Uh, there is a place for a V-berth that will come in and fill this all in, and it'll be huge. But these are already very large uh, V-berth cushions, aren't they? Yep. And we have big chest of drawers. And on this side, I have a head. Look at this. And you know what we also have? Is it a twofer? It is a twofer. Anyway, I'm in here. Uh, now, this is all pretty, uh, pretty cleverly done. This, this door will fold open, so that can be latched in place or latched closed. But now we have the sort of interesting thing about the way this is set up. It opens up. If we close this door here, you'd really have a sensation of even more room in your forward cabin, wouldn't you? There's a handheld shower. We don't have a stainless sink. We've got a molded-in sink. Look at the mirror. This is like full body. Oh, uh, yeah. Look at it. Can you see that? Captain-like. Very clever. You know, I put the... Yep. Toilet paper in the little thing so it doesn't oh. get wet when you're showering. Always like that. It's always nice. And we have more of this opaque. Or translucent. Or translucent, as the case may be. And we have two ports in the head. That's very nice. <laughs> Look at that. I have never seen that. Look at the plug in the shower drain. Oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, Randy, I'm hesitant to, to uh, try this berth out, but I think I should. What do you think? Yeah, I guess if you take your shoes off. This is... Winning prizes right now. Guess what? Ah, uh, you're a sweetheart. It's in the contract. I'm going to swing myself up here and, and grab a little Z or two now. But this is pleasant. And I know if Randy would let me open this hatch, we'd be blown away because there's a nice uh, breeze out of the northeast. Oh, boy. This is really... It's not memory foam, but it's just good, hard, solid foam. And, oh, get those knees. Now, this was pretty easy. I'm grunting because I grunt all the time anyway. Oh, Oh, now give me a few minutes here, okay? I gotta catch my breath. This is pretty pleasant. 
So, right. Rande, I think that calls it for the day. Good night. We got a chance to look at a O'Day 34. I've been really looking forward to seeing this boat because it's an O'Day. I was a dealer for these many years ago, uh, but it was before this period, so I didn't see these boats coming through. But we went on board, and I remember when you walked up on board that boat, your jaw sort of dropped, didn't it? Yeah. You said, this boat is really clean, it's really neat, and whoa, where do you look below in the, the spaciousness, and this boat happened to have some really nice uh, canvas cushions down oh, there. Didn't beautiful, it? brand new. I just had a feeling of Americanism with this boat. It just felt, it wasn't trying to be a Euro boat or something like that. The beam on this boat was a little over 11 feet. And uh, you really felt it when you were below. It burst for five people or six if you want to push it. So, that being said, that boat's a floater. We're going to give 10 points right off the bat because O'Day is like, you get on a, an O'Day, it's like raising the American flag in your front lawn. It's a really nice boat. This just, it had niceness to it. And you didn't have to work too hard because there was about this much <laughs> teak on the boat. No maintenance. Just as a great bargain, uh, we got to give it another eight. Yeah. Uh, so we're at uh, 28. Her sister ship won the Marion Bermuda. Oh, so yeah. you can go race this boat. I'm going, I'm going another seven. We're going to 35. Woo hoo hoo, baby. Wow. And did you mention the, the nav station? Yes. 36, one more. Wow. Oh, one other thing that, that we should note about that boat, the draft is four feet and three inches. Yeah. You can go anywhere in the world with that boat, practically. No centerboard. Yeah. So, we like the 1983 O'Day 34. We like it. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>